Hey everybody, I'm Polish Pete, and this is all about the pre-spawn. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the staples around the country for pre-spawn bass fishing. And by staples I mean the, these are five techniques that have worked all over the country for a long, long time. Some, some newer techniques, but most of these will work anywhere throughout the country during the pre-spawn bass fishing season. Now, there are nuances to all the lakes out there and there's certainly some colors or different baits and techniques that have worked for hardcore anglers all over the country during the pre-spawn but these ones i'm going to go over today have been ones that have shined and stood the test of time absolutely for every level of angler that's out there so hopefully today this helps you out uh understanding some of the things that you should have in your tackle box and you should be armed with in your arsenal when you go out to attack the pre-spawn i'm going to start first with Old Faithful, the spinner bait. The spinner bait is one of the staples in everybody's tackle box of all ages and throughout the country. It's a simple bait to use, tie it on, cast it out, and retrieve it. Now there are a lot of nuances to spinner bait fishing and the experts at it can go on for days and days and days with all the little tips and techniques and different things to do to modify your spinner baits for different water temperatures, different colors of water, uh, different times of the year, etc, etc, etc. I'm going to keep it simple here and just tell you some of the things that I look for in a pre-spawn condition to catch fish on a spinner bait. So, when you're looking for a spinnerbait in those colder water temperatures where the water isn't warming in the pre-spawn and during the pre-spawn these fish are staging themselves close to their spawning grounds or around their spawning grounds to find forage to feed up before they go actively into the spawn where they're not actively feeding as hard so they're feeding up to go into the spawn so you're looking to target areas that are close to, adjacent to spawning grounds or the actual physical spawning grounds themselves. A lot of the lakes I fish, I typically find those fish going right to those spawning grounds as soon as the water starts to warm in the spring. And they're, they'll, you'll actually catch them around where they're going to bed and, and actually go to, into the spawn. And a spinner bait helps you basically find active schools of fish that are starting to mill around these spawning grounds. And a, color, a large Colorado bladed spinner bait, when those water temps are super cold and the water's got a lot of color in it, tend to be the best, most biggest produ producers for me. And they have, uh, they, they really do shine in the, like I said, in those cold water uh, conditions. Uh, but I'll switch to a willow blade spinner bait like this here from Bassman, from Bassman spinner baits when I'm trying to cover water faster. Now, if that water is warming and it's getting warmer, I can fish a bait a lot faster. And that's where these thin little blades tend to shine. I can fish the bait faster and it provides a bunch of flash and can just be cooking through the water column. So I can basically put that trolling motor on high and cook around in the shallow waters and try and target those fish with a willow bladed spinner bait. Trailers on a spinner bait can be really key too. If you're missing a lot of fish with a spinner bait, there's always the tried and true trailer hook and that's been a staple for a lot of people for a long time is adding another hook to the back of your spinner bait. I've personally had more success adding a trailer to my spinner bait and that's a really thin bodied style swim bait or the double legged uh, trailers you see out there for spinner baits from some of the manufacturers. But something small that doesn't affect the action of the spinner bait. You don't want your spinner bait to have a lot of back and thump or anything like that. You want this uh, the, the trailer to be a lower, smaller profile so that fish wants to get that bigger profile around that hook in its mouth. And I think your hooking percentage goes way up when you add a trailer to it. Uh, so it's a good tip uh, for if you're if you're throwing a spinner bait around and you're missing any fish, try out adding like this right here is the Kitek Easy Shiner and a 3.5. It's a great spinner bait trailer option for you, all you spinner bait anglers. Next up is uh, a new kit on the block, uh, and it's not super new, but it is to the general public, and that's the old school chat or the the I shouldn't say old school the chatter bait, the new kit on the block. This is probably the most popular way to catch fish in the country right now, uh, and all different types of bodies of water throughout the country. Uh, there are some nuances to fishing it during the pre-spawn, however. Uh, I do think, just like we've always heard. 
from all anglers around the country that red seems to shine in the spring. So the popularity of this particular bait right here is is well talked about in, in throughout the industry right now. This being the red uh, jackhammer, the fire craw jackhammer. Uh, this color is a really popular color in the spawn pre-spawn. A lot of anglers believe that that red color in a, in a bass's mind signifies that stuff's going on around the spawn, right? That if you look at the tails of bass during the spawn season, their tails get really red. Uh, there's lots of theories on why red tends to work better in the spring, but it just does for some reason. It gives a lot of anglers confidence in that pre-spawn time of year to throw red colored baits. I've had luck, to be honest with you, on lots of different colors in the spring, but red is definitely one. If you're not sure what you want to try, you want a little confidence, try out some red first when you get out there during the pre-spawn. Uh, dirtier water, I do still, still tend to like that black-blue color, or if you're in really clear water conditions, we have some new style uh, chatter baits out of the market that have much more subtle blades that don't have as much thump and action like this uh, jackhammer stealth blade here, and it's a clear blade on it so that you don't have all that flash vibration coming from it. Uh, so this is a much more subtle, clear water presentation for pre-spawn fishing. Um, when you're fishing a chatterbait during the pre-spawn, it's really key to try and find that early stage vegetation or cover that's there around that spawning area. Okay. They still work on a, just a straight retrieve through the water column, but they're really going to shine if you can find cover that those fish are keying on early on the spawn. Bass are ambush predators. They like to get around some sort of cover, such as early season vegetation, leftover vegetation from the winter months, whatever's still strong and holding on, patches of grass, patches of uh, pad stems are very popular in the spring, things like that. Hard cover, such as laydowns, trees that have laid down the water, even old tires that someone's thrown in the lake, things like that. If you can find those cover areas and get your chatterbait being fished where it can make contact with any of that cover, whether it's a vegetation or hard cover, we like to call vegetation soft cover, get that chatterbait to make contact with that cover so that the head's actually striking into that cover and breaking through it, coming off of it, and you'll see that some of the best bites of the year are in the pre-spawn. Those fish are feeding up, and if you can find those active schools, you'll get lots and lots of bites, and your confidence level will skyrocket. Uh, trailer options for a chatterbait are getting to be, there's some staples right now, and that would be like the Z-Man Razor Shad, the Yamamoto Zako, the Lake Fork Magic Shad, which is a favorite of mine. There's a whole bunch. Strike King's got a new blade minnow. There's a whole bunch of options for you out there. During the pre-spawn, even the boot tail swim baits have been known to work. I prefer these thinner style tail trailers that don't create a lot of action behind the chatter bait myself, but lots of anglers are, with this bait being sort of new to the general market, there's people finding out new ways to fish it all the time. But if you want a confidence bait to go out in the pre-spawn and catch them, and especially if you've got a lot of vegetation around, it's harder to fish some other baits, try out a, a, a chatter bait. You're going to have a great time fishing the pre-spawn and a lot of success throwing a chatter bait around shallow spawning areas during that time of year. This is the swim jig. So black blue swim jigs have always been something that's in my boat all the time and especially during the pre-spawn. I love swim jigs, they're a confidence bait of mine and during the pre-spawn they really do have a home for, for a lot of people in lakes throughout the country, especially lakes that have a lot, a lot of cover in them. Uh, if there's still thick vegetation in your bodies of water in those cold water months, and I mean cold water by being those early spring months, the pre-spawn period where those fish have not locked down on beds yet, a swim jig could be a really effective tool. Where I think a swim jig shines in the pre-spawn is when those fish aren't necessarily super aggressive. Okay, they're not chasing down baits like a spinner bait or a chatter bait, like I said. Something making a lot of commotion, like some baits we'll talk about next with the, like the, uh, the lipless crankbait, things like that. If you want a more subtle presentation to get those fish to react during the pre-spawn, a swim jig shines. I think a swim jig really does have, find, its, find its home the best in the pre-spawn when those water temperatures are cooling on you. You're hoping that that water temps go up into those high 50s, mid 60s, even high 60s where those fish start actively locking down to go to spawn. But 
you got a cold few nights in those spring nights and that water temp starting to drop on you and those fish are really getting lethargic and you're trying to find them you're trying to get them to bite a swim jig with a boot tail style swim bait on the back being fished slowly through all that cover can be a real subtle fish catching presentation um, you know the the whites are great shad patterns if you're in a lot of those shad forage fisheries in the south part of the country or up here in minnesota we have the Mississippi River, which has shad forage too, and white swim jigs can be really, really effective in all those shad forage bodies of water. I like them even on our natural lakes up here that don't have shad as the forage with uh, cross style trailers on them, whatever. I, I think that that white color does get bit a lot better in the spring in the North Country than it does during the summer months, but the white is a really good color and black blue is a staple of mine in those dirty waters with cross style, kicking style chunk trailers or a boot tail. Uh, but a swim jig you're gonna find to be most effective in that pre-spawn in those pre-spawn months when the, the fish are, aren't as necessarily as aggressive as you want them to be, I should say. Lipless crankbaits. So you got the old lipless here. This one here is one of Brad's here at the office. This one's been chewed up. You can see the hooks are missing some paint and there's some paint missing on the bait. He's even got a little tag end of his line still tied on it. So you know this one worked. So this is the old faithful Bill Lewis rattle trap style. Uh, there's uh, like the striking red eye shad here, the rappel of rip and wrap, which has been a staple for me for a long time in those spring months. Uh, the lipless crankbait to me, out of all these baits I've talked about, probably next to the spinner bait, is the most popular pre-spawn lure in the history of the world, <laughs> in the history of bass fishing. Uh, it's an easy bait to fish, it makes a lot of noise, has a lot of commotion coming through the water column. You just throw them out and you crank them back to the boat around those areas where you believe those fish are going to be spawning, which are those shallow flats like I mentioned before hard cover areas where those fish can make a bed and protect their eggs. They really do shine when you can find some cover like I mentioned with the other baits before that those fish can sit around. If you can fish these through the vegetation they really can get some huge bites during the pre-spawn and I'll be honest some of the biggest bass I've caught myself personally during the pre-spawn if I'm targeting larger fish trying to get a bigger bite have been on a lipless crankbait. They do tend to get that big huge bite. Um, they are a little tougher to fish around vegetation, hence my belief in the popularity of the chatterbait. It, just like the, the chatterbait, the lipless crankbait is causing a ton of commotion. Um, and, and getting them to contact that cover is so key to get those bigger bites from those bigger fish that are hard hanging around that, that heavy cover. Now you will get a lot of active pre-spawn fish not around cover, so if you're fishing with kids, if you're new to angling, if you're having a hard time getting the bait freed up fishing through that cover, a lipless crankbait's a great option for you just to go out and catch some fish during the pre-spawn. You can avoid all those grassy areas and just reel these through the water column around those shallow water areas and a lot of those aggressive pre-spawn fish will actually come out and just eat these things in open water. So if you're just an angler that's out there just looking to have some fun and catch some fish in the spring, a lipless crankbait is probably one of the number one options for you to just go out, cast around, and get bit in the spring. Last up is probably one of the most killer baits to fish during the pre-spawn. Uh, for tournament anglers, uh, your, your average weekend angler, uh, they do require a little bit more finesse and some understanding of what's going on in the water body at the time, but is the jerk bait, okay? The jerk bait to me is really gonna shine in the pre-spawn when those waters, like I was talking about before with the swim jig, have cooled down on you. So you're, you're, the, that spring momentum's coming, water's warming up, those fish are really active, they're running around, they're eating everything that you throw out there in front of them. A jerk bait's effective just like every other bait I talked about before and any bait in your tackle box at that time and during those conditions. But sometimes during the spring, when you're out there in those pre-spawn months, you get a cold front or big changes in weather in, in general. Uh, it can make it really tough to get some of those fish to bite and even though they're wadded up uh, the, those those during those conditions the jerkbait really does come out and shine you can make this thing stop on a dime and suspend 
and it makes those really neutral fish that aren't chasing down baits and just eating everything coming around them that are feeding up feel like they've got an opportunity to get a meal without having to run it down and chase it and they'll eat it on that pause so when you fish really slow with a jerk bait in those cold water months during the pre-spawn you can get some of the biggest fish in the in the water in the in that water body to commit to a bait that aren't dumb and cha and eating everything moving around super fast so if your water temps are cooling and you know that you know you, that day is colder than it was the day before or you've done any research before you went out on that body of water during the pre-spawn to go fishing and you see that you've you've lost water temp over the last few days or you got a cold front moving through or you've just been fishing throughout the day and you're not getting bit those fish are getting inactive on you and you've been catching them the last few days throwing everything you got in your tackle box try a jerk bait go to those same productive parts of the lake that are that are holding those pre-spawn fish those secondary uh locations adjacent to spawning flats uh you know points that are close to shallow water uh, anytime you've got a, a, a bay that gets shallow in the back end of it and you've got maybe a, a trough that's running up to that shallow water or a break, uh, uh, you know, that first break in depth before you get to shallow water that flattens out for a, a period of, uh, in the lake there, you want to find those areas that might be holding those pre-spawn fish and get these, you can get jerk baits that go to different depths from all different manufacturers. Uh, and try and get downsize your line and get them as deep as you get, need to get them to get them in front of those fish's face and just stop them. Fishing them really slow, the slower cadence. Making big counts between your jerks of your rod to make that jerk bait move is really key in those cold water conditions. And you can get really good bites, big fish bites on a jerk bait when those fish are lethargic and cold. Now I like shallower moving jerk baits being fish a lot more aggressive if you're covering water trying to find active fish. And if that water's starting to warm on you a little bit but it's really cold, that fishing a jerk bait more erratically can get you a lot of bites during the spring. This is a key that you learn how to do if you're fishing those cold weather spawning months before it gets really warm. Uh, a jerk bait will be a huge tool for you to add to your arsenal. Uh, just get used to, un to understanding that water temperature is gonna play a big factor in how you fish a jerk bait. Remember what I said earlier, which is the colder it gets, the slower you fish it, the warmer it gets, or a warming trend means the faster and more erratic you fish that jerk bait. So these are, like I said before, are the five staples to your, to your tackle box you should have in your bow, five techniques you should know for pre-spawn bass fishing. That, like I said, there's other techniques out there that work as well, but these ones right here, if you're not familiar with that time of year, if you're not confident in fishing in those uh, cold weather months uh, uh, around the country, anywhere, these are five techniques you wanna pick up and try and learn how to do to get yourself confidence because you will catch them all over the country doing one of these five techniques in the pre-spawn. So thanks for listening and go catch them.